Hey, what's going on? It's the Deja Vu Show. You know we always have your favorite celeb stopping by. Today we have that media mogul herself, Miss Mona Scott. Don't forget the young. Mona Scott Young. She was up in here, y'all, trying to take my job. Trying to. <laughs> She's like, the Deja Vu Show. Ah! I was practicing. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need a career switch. Oh, girl, you have had so many dope successes in your career. Talk to us about, okay, I know we're here to talk about love and love murder. Love and murder. Atlanta, Atlanta Playboy. Woo! Atlanta Playboy. Atlanta Playboy. Yes. All right, so before we get to that, yes. I want to go back. Let's go back. Rewind. I want to hear about you. How did you get started in this industry? Because you have, like, such legacy. I don't think folks know. Oh, wow. You want to go all the... How far back do you want to I want to take it back to... Because we don't have that much time now. No, no baby. <laughs> you ain't going to rest me after you've been up here trying to... Deja vu show. Tell me, no. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I started in music, and okay. that's what a lot of people don't know. They always think, like, love and hip-hop was it. But love and hip-hop was a culmination of 20-something years right. doing management, you know, in the hip-hop uh, music world and we had um, back then with my late partner Chris Lighty mm -hmm. a management company called Violator of course and um, you know over the course of the years we managed a ton of talent and when I transitioned and started Mona Me Entertainment mm -hmm. and Mona Me Management and Productions was an offshoot of that. Um, Missy Elliott stayed as a client, and I've maintained close relationships with Busta Rhymes and right. a ton of the acts that we managed back then. What do you think about hip hop being fifty years old, girl, and in the progression? But you had a whole big role in helping I, to I steer mean, listen, these people. It has been like one big reunion, right? One big trip down memory lane. Especially when I look back at my life and I realized. There were so many iconic moments right. that I had the blessing and the privilege to be in the room for, mm -hmm. a part of in some small way, you know, have a role in. Um, yeah, it's been an incredible journey. And this whole year of celebrating, you know, 50 years of hip hop and celebrating all of the artists who have made an impact in it has been, like I said, one big trip down memory lane, one big mm -hmm. reunion. Where, so where proud. The, will there be any TV shows spawning off of that? You know, I think there have been so many celebrations, right? right. There have been a lot of shows based around it. What I'm hoping is that it's just not a one-year thing. That's what I was saying. Yes, I want exactly. to keep that same energy for 2024. keep that same energy as the kids the say. Especially the corporations. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we still have some pretty iconic, you know, um, momentous occasions coming up. Missy yes. getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. First yes. female hip-hop artist ever. Come on. So that's happening November 3rd. See, that's management part that's the management <laughs> part you hear that you hear how she slid that in that's how she's a professional no we saw buster right? receive the lifetime achievement award you think in his 30 years mm -hmm. of you know entertaining us and and of you know creating so much amazing music and content that it would not have taken this long but mm -hmm. we saw him get mm -hmm. his lifetime achievement award at the bt awards so you know still a lot of celebrations to come I love it. All right, so from that, mm -hmm. let's jump into the early 2000s with love and hip-hop. Yeah. Where did this come from? Because this has been around, it's pushing 20 years in a, in a couple of years. Is it 20 years? No, it, it, I think it's like, yeah, 13, 14 years. Um, but like I said, it came as a result. I mean, Yandy Smith, who, you know, eventually became a cast member, was mm -hmm. my intern back in the Violator days. and That's she, crazy. Intern. Yes. And you never know what's going to lead you. Exactly. Coming right out of college, one of the most tenacious and focused and, you know, dedicated um, people I've ever had the fortune of meeting. But anyway, she had moved on and started managing Jim Jones. Okay. And they had this whole thing that was going on at Viacom where they were trying to get a concept off the ground. And um, when I branched out and did my own thing, I also had met the executive, Jim Ackerman, mm. who was at the time running VH1, uh, running their creative department. And um, this was something he was committed to, an idea that he wanted to see happen. So we set about developing it into what, you know, eventually became known as love and hip hop girl yeah. and it has changed the cultural pop zeitgeist all of that and, and mean, the look of television and of the unscripted look? the unscripted absolutely. television yes, exactly. absolutely so how many different franchises are there now well they were at its height four and then of course there would be specials right. and spinoffs and stuff now they are two primarily running and you know they bifurcated one is on MTV which is Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and the other one is on uh, VH1 still mm -hmm. which is now you know under uh, BET Oversight 
site and that's so how does that work Miami. for you as a as the owner manager producer mm-hmm. when it splits to different networks like that i mean listen it's been 13 years right i'm not necessarily boots on the ground day in day out yeah. right hard thing for people to understand but it's something that you know i created and executive produced for it you know in the early days right. of the franchise i still do the specials because you know we have offshoot specials that we do every once in a while um but for the most part there's you know an entire team in place that manages the day-to-day production gotcha. of the show and then it's still under the paramount mm-hmm. umbrella mm. overall they've just you know yes decided that vh1 is now going to be over at bet and they kept the Atlanta show over at MTV. Girl, because you have ratings. You are a ratings earner with this stuff. Listen, the <laughs> franchise does its thing. I mean, I'm grateful that it still manages to, you know, uh-huh. evolve and maintain its audience. And, you know, that folks are still tuning in. Do you select or did you back in the day select the ones who were going to be the cast members? Back in the early days, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And again, at this point, there's an entire machine. There's right. a team that, you know, is day to day to day. How do you navigate the pitfalls of some of those situational things that happen during the show because of course your name is the brand name of course and yeah and while people may be running the day to day it still comes mm-hmm. back well Mona Sky Young exactly. such and such and such what what do you do about that because- I mean it's hard to you know navigate because there's no way to get on a bullhorn and say okay people I wasn't there I saw this <laughs> on the same time that you saw it you know uh-huh. because people are going to believe what they want to believe right? right so the truth of the matter is a lot of hundred percent of the time at this point, I'm watching it at the same time that the rest of, you know, the world is seeing it. Right. Um, and it's the double edged sword. It comes with the territory, right? I can't say, Oh, I'm here for the good, mm-hmm. but don't mess with me when it, you know, it comes to the bad. Cause people are going to again, have their opinions and they're passionate. Right. They're oh, very that's passionate. Like, that's again, your double edged sword because they yeah. are passionate. Exactly. Everybody wants to voice their opinion about it because they means they're tuning in. Yep. Yep. And yep. they're seeing the stuff that's happening. Yep. Yep. I mean, I don't live on social media, so I'm not sitting there every second of the day. Of course. And I also know that it's a, it's a platform for venting, mm-hmm. right? People get on there. They find like minds. They, the conversation is mm-hmm. happening. And guess what? In the beginning, social media was what, propelled love and right. hip-hop right right after that half hour because it started out as a half hour went off the air it was all about that conversation right and on people Twitter, talking about everybody it. so yes. again you can't say oh social media was great for us in the beginning and then say oh social media is a bad thing right now mm-hmm. it's conversation people are passionate they have the right to you know express how they feel i just always am clear about who I am, the role that I played, you know, my relationship with the talent, with the franchise. So you can't, you know, convince everyone. Right. Yeah. Okay. Can't please everybody. Can't please everybody. But you do take a stand when certain things happen. I mean, listen, it it happens. And again, a lot of the time and most of the time, I'm finding out and I do get involved when there's something mm-hmm. to get involved in. Mm-hmm. Right. And But for the most part, The show has always been a um, forum for spirited conversation. I like that spirited conversation. Come on now. (laughs) Going back to (laughs) us, you know, profiling same-sex relationships, which is something that we hadn't seen. You know, we've dealt with a lot of difficult issues, domestic violence and you know, and it and it's cyclical, right. right? And so it's fostered a lot of conversation and people are, you know, talking about it. So it's still working. We will see how, you know, what comes out of this. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I want to know from the love and hip hop thing, where do you go there now? So you're you're doing your movies, but how, what was the in between? Well, from love that? and hip hop, you go to love and murder. Come on, love yeah. and murder. No, <laughs> love what, and murder. What made you mm-hmm. want to go into something like a true crime series? I mean, it's just about expansion and growth, right? Yeah. Even in the unscripted space, we start out doing docu ensembles and then we went into the crime space. We I, did. Wait, well, pause for uh, one second. I went back and looked. I forgot how much stuff you've done. You know? Like, you've done a whole bunch of things from, like, the not just the reality show part, Love mm. & Hip Hop, but other series, other mm. things. Even you did something one time with the radio station before. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. did This Is Hot 97. Yeah. The, the crazy part about it is, like, 
prior to me getting into television, you think about the body of work and what I did in management, right? Those were some of the most iconic moments in music history. Mm -hmm. Everything from LL Cool J and 50 Cent and Busta and Missy and all of the acts that we represented. But then moving into television, right, the success of Love & Hip Hop kind of overshadowed that. And because it still continues to be a fairly, you know, successful show, you're, it's always going to kind of take precedence. So when you look at the body of work, you'll see everything from, you know, we did a series um, in the Latin space for Amazon, now right? That I don't think I knew about. Exactly. Wow. And then we did, a, the, like I said, a crime series, right? Hip Hop Homicides. Mm-hmm. And I produced that with uh, 50's company. 50, and yes. we did that um, for a season. And that was in the crime space. Boots on the Ground. Van Lathan was phenomenal as our host for that. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's a wide kind of variety okay. of, of content that we produce. And then the next evolution is scripted. Right. So we were able to at the, you know, coming out of the pandemic, uh, get a project up called B-Boy Blues Mm -hmm. that BET plus um, still up on BET plus now. And then we did this project here, which hopefully is an, you know, a series of projects under the love and murder. I, I like the love and that's really dope. That's really dope. Yeah. All right. So how did you pick this particular story to tell? Because even just watching the trailer, you're like, oh, this dude was on. What, what was he doing? This dude was that dude. Um, well, you know. Larissa Bates, who is the executive at BET, um, mm-hmm. she wanted to do something in the crime and the passion thriller space, right? right? She just understood the audience and what they're looking for and said, you know, there's an audience for this. They love crime. They love, you know, romance. And if we could get a few of these ripped from the headlines type stories, mm-hmm. um, it would be great. And there was a book out there, Redbone, that um, she wanted to option. And it took a few years to develop the story. And uh, then... Once we got the green light, casting it, once Tay Diggs fell into place. Right, the you rest snagged of it Tay was Diggs. Like, listen, it was Chocolate timing. Boy Wonder. And he did such a fantastic job mm-hmm. because Lance was a complex character. You know, very easy to dislike because he was incredibly, you know, ambitious mm-hmm. and made a lot of enemies in business. But he was also a ladies man. So, you know, he was charismatic. Right. And he probably had a lot of charm. Um, now probably would be known as, you know, what do they call them, F boys? (laughs) Girl, yes. (laughs) But but, so finding somebody who could capture that duality and, Mm -hmm. you know, convey someone who's still likable and affable, which I think he did a great job doing. Um, But yeah, when he was brutally murdered, there were a lot of suspects right right and and of course the story is based on a true story so it's easy enough to like get to googling mm-hmm. and to see some what some of those details are but if you um believe what you read that she's you know it says she didn't do it mm-hmm. who knows who knows who knows okay so you have a great cast with tay you have keisha, keisha sharp. sharp yeah their dynamic their chemistry was so great and she's so fantastic she's amazing she's amazing i saw april's in there too april is in there okay. and and some of the other you know cast members who we all know and love are peppered throughout the the two-part series because the first part went up last thursday right. part two goes up um this thursday yes and uh what's great about like seeing it, it for me right is being able to provide another outlet Mm -hmm. for their creativity Mm -hmm. right so it's it's always been for me just as a manager at heart about providing opportunities so now that I'm moving into scripted I love to be able to turn around and say hey you want to act I like that I like that all right so now I want to find out more about your role with this so Mm -hmm. you you have the project you're working with the sister from BET and and swirl films and shout out to Abby McDonald Eric Thomasunas what does your day look like I gotta give the shout outs go ahead I'm sorry Nick Roses Mm -hmm. now I'm just Kidding, go mm, ahead. Mm, mm. <laughs> no, but how does it, what does it, the day look mm. like? Are you on set with them? Are you helping to oversee the script? Do you, or do you just, you know, provide the. Yeah, no, it was a collaborative thing. environment, you know, everything from the script phase all the way through to making of the movie. I was on the ground in Atlanta. It was great because, you know, I love the fact that it's a period piece. So seeing, you know, not only the environment and the atmosphere that we created to capture that late 90s right. vibe, but watching, you know, the characters kind of get into those outfits <laughs> and those roles. So, um, yeah, no, it was a great experience. We had a lot of fun making the movie. I like that. All right, so make sure you guys 
guys go and check for Love and Murder Atlanta Playboy. It's a two-parter. You can binge it all weekend. Yes, yes. What's next for you outside of trying to be your uh, radio <laughs> voice yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it's Love and Murder. Come on out. Atlanta Playboy. No, <laughs> But wait, wait. Yes. When are y'all getting on the screen? Okay, you and uh, hubby. Me and the hubby? That I is want funny. Love, look, love look at his face. <laughs> I don't, you guys can't see his face here, but um, you know, I say this all the time. Trust me, people, it's boring. Not that it's boring, but we want to look. Now he's looking at me like, "Are we boring?" <laughs> We're not boring, honey. It's just that we have, you know, the kids. The kids are grown. We empty nesters now. My mama live with us. You know, we're just doing the family thing at the you know Scott what? Young We're gonna residence. turn the camera back around. Boom! I want to see. <laughs> I want to see the minutia. I want to see the creativity. But we need to see people. Like like you thriving. I want to see that in action. That's why I'm like, what does the day look like? What are what you doing? How many day? cups of coffee are we yeah. drinking? <laughs> oh, lots of cups of coffee. It starts early <laughs> in the morning and goes well into the night. No, I mean, listen, we've been very, very blessed. We've been together for many, many years. Mm -hmm. He was just, you just told me the math. 27 years together going on 18 years married. Right? Wow. Yep. There you go. What's the key to a successful marriage? Uh, what is the key to a success? Letting him believe he is right at all times. Talk about it. Yes. <laughs> letting him believe. Letting See, him believe. Oh, I didn't say that? he was right. I said letting him believe he is right. I love you it. Know, the, it's in the details. I love it. Yes. All right. So give me a hustler's tip. We On the show, we always talk about things that people can do to, you know, level up themselves if mm -hmm. they're trying to start their business or, you right. know, executive wise or whatever. Give me a lesson that you've learned in the industry or just as you're growing your company. You've got to be self-motivated. You cannot be looking for outside validation, right? A lot of times people need the outside stimulus in order to get up and to get going. You've got to be able to find that within because if not, you dead in the water, mm. right? Because people are going to come and go in your life. People are going to support you at some times and not at others. And so you've got to be consistent with being able to be self-motivated. How were you able to self-motivate even when people said, girl, I don't think that's going to work? I mean, listen, it happens every single day, especially like throughout the pandemic, right? When things were like dead. Yeah. And then we had this strike as we were trying to get into scripted. It's about getting up every day and just hitting the trail, you know, mm -hmm. making, creating a list of things for yourself that you want to accomplish. Being consistent with like hitting the pavement every day because it's it, it gets hard. It gets hard for all of us at every level. Yeah. It's yeah. a grind. It's a grind. Definitely. Absolutely. All right. Real quick. Favorite song, R&B. Girl, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff you're supposed to ask me uh -uh, prior to I want, so I nope, can think nope, about nope, it. Nope, 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 Favorite song, R&B. Maybe just right now. What are you singing? What are you singing? What's on your list when you're turning up? Oh, I don't have a favorite song right this Mona, moment I'm not in talking time. To you. I don't. You worked with all these dope artists. I know, and that's why I can't be picking favorites because that's how I get in <laughs> trouble. In your, okay, give me some no. bars that you spit. Give me some bars. Give me something. my favorite song right now is "No Statements" by Scarlett, my new client. <laughs> Stream that project <laughs> now. Goes, no, I, no, I am not taking that. <laughs> we I, didn't talk about the fact that I started managing again. I, I, didn't I know put that. my management head back on. So, what made you want to pick Scarlett? She is on fire. But Scarlett what did you see? In her. Like, no, it, it, it really was, it was Boston Swiss, right? They reached out to me. They said they had this artist that they were working with. My husband, who doesn't want me to take on another thing, right, checked out her, her social media page. That's Buster sent me her IG and was like, yo, just check her out and call me back, uh -huh, uh -huh. right? And uh, we checked it out, and he was like, you should do this. You have to do this. And so, you know, we built a team. Shout out to Treva Williams, who's out there, you know, working with her right now on the road. She's on promo tour. Um, but she's a special girl. I think when people meet her, when people understand her backstory, when they hear her music, right. understand how she's turned her, you know, purpose and, and she's, you know, she's turned her pain into her purpose and found, you know, her path. Mm -hmm. Um you just want to root for her. You want to support her. You want to see her win. Yes. And so, you know, my DNA activated and, I, and I'm back. I'm and doing she's it. back in this hip-hop <laughs> game. But it, has it changed? I mean, I know we have a lot more oh, female it, MCs than before. It has what changed do you think? both on the front and on the back end. What does right? that mean? More female in, MCs than we've seen. And I love the, you know, camaraderie and I love the support that you're seeing. The other day, Glo Glorilla brought her out on stage. Nice. And, you know, I th she posted the other day, um, Pretty V just poured into her right. and and it's it spans the gamut right because like if you look at like 
Buster and Swiss supporting a young emerging female artist that speaks to the respect level for what the female MCs are doing right now. Um, but you know, it's a streaming game now. It's a social media mm-hmm. game. It's a, you know, views game. Mm-hmm. So it's a very different landscape. And I love to constantly learn. So there's definitely been a learning curve coming back into it. I think it's really good. Will you take on more artists or are you going to just focus no. on the... <laughs> no. Nope. She's like, no. Nope. No, this was, you know, and I call it a labor of love because, again, this wasn't something I sought out. Right. It was just something I felt compelled to do. That's beautiful. You know? That's beautiful. All right. Philanthropic efforts. I know that you sit on the board of a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Give me some of the stuff that you like to do and some of your causes. I mean, we still work very closely with the Grassroots Community Foundation. They're getting ready to do their holiday drive. You know, it, it kind of went down for a couple of years after the pandemic, but now it's back. And so definitely want people to support. They do a lot also to support, you know, the causes around period poverty, mm-hmm. which is, you know, another cause near and dear um yeah but it's just always about figuring out ways to work with our community and when are you going to relax relate release and vacation Uh, you know what we do vacate um (laughs) i i took a family vacation this year uh, and it was like huge extended family i think we were a party of 25 oh i love it yes exactly so it was the nephews and their you know and the niece and their significant others and all the grand nephews and nieces and stuff and yeah we went and got a house in jamaica one of our favorite places Uh and just relaxed and then we took a couple trip the other day to Martha's Vineyard. We went up there with a couple of friends oh, and well, did that as well. Listen, I didn't get our invite. What was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, um, we uh, going to uh, get you... the email and make sure that that happens. <laughs> yes. She's quick on her feet too. <laughs> quick with the stories. Quick with it. I love it. Mona Scott Young, thank you for stopping by. Oh, uh, thank you for having I me. I love Deja your Vu. energy, the vibe, everything. Uh, thank you so much. This was great. I enjoyed it. And don't forget parts one and two. There she go. Yes. She if go. you have not watched part two, make sure sh- part one, make sure you catch up in time for part two going up tomorrow on BT Plus. And this is what? The Deja Vu Show. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 